And so we come to the end of your investing life. Today, we are looking to the future. Maybe for you, the distant future, or maybe not quite so distant, but we're looking at exit strategies. What are we doing all this for? Well, that is what we're going to talk about today. Now, the portfolio that you have today isn't necessarily the one that you'll have when you get to this end point, especially if it's quite distant for you. That portfolio might be bigger than it is today. Hopefully it will be. And it might be made up of different properties. You might have a different amount of debt. How your portfolio changes throughout your investing life is a really interesting topic in itself. So, Rob, let's get into this. Broadly, there are three options that we're going to talk about. But the first option is keep a portfolio forever. The second option is reduce your portfolio and clear the debt. And the third option option is just sell everything. Yeah, so your first option, keep a portfolio forever. Well, you could just carry on, change absolutely nothing. And you can do that. And a lot of people struggle with this as a concept because they feel like they must do something with their portfolio at some point. But if your portfolio is provided you an income and you're quite happy with that income, and potentially you may one day want to pass your portfolio on to future generations, then you can just carry on. And that income can be your retirement income. Now, I think the reason why a lot of people struggle with this as a concept is mortgages. And that's because people feel like they must pay off the mortgage. That must be the deal, right? At some point, I've got to pay this mortgage off. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case. Because later in life, you can still continue to get buy-to-let mortgages. At 65, it doesn't stop. Or 70, there are mortgage products available to way later in life. And lenders are often quite comfortable with that because the chances are the amount of leverage you have against your portfolio, the amount of debt, has decreased over time because your portfolio has gone up in value, but you've not necessarily been refinancing as aggressively as you normally would, if at all, towards the end of this investment cycle. So I think that's the first thing we need to make clear in the first sort of myth around exit strategies we need to kind of bust is that you can, if you want to, just carry on exactly as you were with the exact same portfolio as before and that is okay but rob in practicality you wouldn't do that because there are things you probably want to consider that will improve this as an option yeah i think it's a really interesting idea the fact that there doesn't have to be this event But while you can definitely keep a portfolio running forever with debt if you want to, you're probably not going to want to own exactly the same portfolio in retirement as you do before. So what you might actually end up doing is owning quite a different portfolio. So you'll sell certain properties. Maybe you'll sell the ones that were geared more towards growth and are not paying you much of an income. Maybe you'll sell the ones that are a bit of a pain to manage. And in their place, you'll buy properties that are more income focused, that have easier management. Maybe you'll rationalise your portfolio geographically. So if you've got properties spread all over the place, you might favour having them all in one location so they're easier to look after. So within this option of keeping a portfolio forever, you've actually got two distinct sub options. One is just carry on. Nothing happens. There is no exit. Nobody watching would ever notice it had happened. And the other option is you keep the portfolio, but it's a slightly different portfolio. Final point on this option is release equity from one of your properties and take that as a lump sum. Of course, your mortgage costs will go up slightly as well. But say you wanted to take 50,000 out, 100,000 out, depending on the size of your portfolio, you can do. Now, if you own that property or, or those properties, in your own name, then you won't pay any tax on that because it's a debt. So for some, this might be quite appealing. If you invest through a limited company, the debt itself isn't taxable, but the equity release remains in the company. So if you then take it out, you will have to pay some tax on that. But the price of that tax may be worth paying for you. So you ultimately still own and keep that portfolio, but you've released a bit of equity from it to enjoy it a bit. You continue to get your income, which is reduced marginally by the new mortgage costs, but you also have that lump sum. And for some people, that'll be the best of both worlds. So just something else to bear in mind as well when you consider this strategy. Option two is sell some of your portfolio and pay off the debt and have your portfolio debt free. Yeah, and this is something that's going to be appealing to a lot of people. Because like Rob said, you can have mortgages till much, much later in life. But a lot of people just don't want to. They just want to know that they own their portfolio free and clear. So what you can do is sell some of your portfolio to pay off the debt on the rest. Now, if the property cycle has been helping you out and you've not been refinancing aggressively, then the loan to value on your portfolio by the time you get to this point should be lower than it is now. So it might be the case that you only need to sell one or two properties to clear the debt on everything else. And this is where having a portfolio is so powerful. 
if you've only got one property, then you are kind of stuck in this binary keep it or sell it mode. But if you've got a portfolio of multiple properties, then we've already seen the changes that you can make to the composition of that. But you could also just sell a couple to free up the rest. But Rob, perhaps neither of these options are going to be right. And in fact, you'll want to sell everything. And you know what? You can do. You can sell everything and realise all the rewards from the hard work that you've put in through over the years. So what do you do with that lump sum? Well, you could go wild if you want and, and blow it on fast cars and fancy yachts. Maybe give some of it away. But for a lot of people, they may want to enjoy a little bit of it, but most will then put it into another investment and that other investment being much more passive. So if the thought of just owning property at all into retirement doesn't appeal, then this is the way to go. You can still get a return by putting all that cash into a more passive investment. And yes, you might not get the capital growth by doing that. And yes, you can't take advantage of things like leverage and time market cycles and all the fun things a property allows you to do. But that's okay. You've done all that. And now you just want an easy life. And that's absolutely fine. And a lot of people will do this. It's okay to let go of property at some point in your life. For some people, they'll be shuddering at the thought. But for others, they'll feel quite relieved to hear us say that. You can do it. So in theory, you don't flick a switch and all your portfolio is liquidated in one day. Because for most people, they will want to at least take tax into consideration. Yeah, there are some things that you can do, and it depends if you own the property as a company or as an individual. So if you're a company, then companies don't get personal allowances. They'll just end up paying corporation tax on the whole lot. So there'll be a tax hit there. But then you can time the payouts to yourself from that company over whatever time scale you like. If you own the property as an individual, then you do get a tax-free allowance each year. So you'll probably want to gradually sell your portfolio in different tax years to maximise the use of that allowance. But realistically, if you have been building a portfolio for possibly decades, then you will have a fairly chunky capital gains tax bill. But like you said, Rob, that should not dictate what you do. So there you have it. We've finally talked about how to exit your portfolio. But remember, whatever you decide to do, timing is so important when it comes to selling. Don't be too rigid and set a date in your head. Look at what the market is doing and keep the 18-year property cycle in mind. And as well as that, of course, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any more videos. 